Number 19. The following reaction has a Kp equals to 4.50 times 10 to the negative fifth at 720 Kelvin, and then they give me this equation right here. N2 gas plus 3H2 gas will come to equilibrium with 2 NH3 gas. Now it says, if a reaction vessel is filled with each gas to the parcel pressure is listed, in which direction will it shift to reach equilibrium? And then they give me the three pressure values. So the first thing is that I see that I have a balanced equation. I got these coefficients in the front. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out that equation. So I got N2, that's a gas. This plus 3H2, that's also a gas, will come to equilibrium and produce two NH3s, and that's a gas. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to categorize everything, and I'm going to write down what they gave me. Now. We're dealing with ATMs here, which means that we're dealing with pressure values. And it kind of makes sense because they gave me a KP. The P stands for pressures. So we're dealing with pressure. So they're saying that the pressure of NH3 was 93 ATM. That was a product over here. So I'm just going to say 93 ATM. A lot of pressure. The pressure of N2 was 48 ATM. And then the pressure of H2 was 52. ATM. Okay. So now, basically, the question is asking for which direction are we going to shift? Are we going to the, uh, the forward reaction in which we will get rid of these to make more of the product? Or will we shift reverse way in which we will get rid of this and make more of these? Well, since we have three numbers, I can't really guesstimate. I'm going to have to do the math to figure out an exact answer. And when we have to predict which direction we need to shift, we need to compare a Q value with the K value. Now they told us a K value, that's great, but they didn't tell me a Q value. But since I have these values, I can find out the Q. So let's first find out what the Q is. The QP is always equal to, there's a standard formula, it's just basically the pressure of the products divided by the pressure of the reactants, and it's always just raised to the coefficients. So first, let's just write a generic, well, not a generic, but the exact expression for this balanced equation, and then we'll just plug in the numbers. But remember, only aqueous and gases are allowed. So first, always check the states. But it looks like we're good here because I got gas, gas, and gas. So all three of these components are going to be in my QP formula. So let's start with the products. I just have one product. So it'd be the pressure of NH3. And now I just got to make sure I got to raise it to the coefficient. So I just put parentheses around it. There is a two here. That's the coefficient. The coefficients, remember, are always the big numbers in the front. So I'm just going to raise it by two. Now let's do the denominator. I got the pressure of N2. I can close the bracket or the parenthesis, and there's no number here, but remember, that means that I just have one of them. So I can raise this to the first, but technically I don't have to. Now remember, with your Q formula, you're multiplying uh, reactants together. So I'm going to multiply by the pressure of the next reactant, which is H2. Close that up. And there was a coefficient here. I have three of them, so I have to cube this. Okay, now we have the formula. Let's plug in the numbers. QP equals something over something else. Let's see. The product was 93. I'm going to close that. This is going to be squared. Divided by N2 was 48. 48. Close that off. Times by H2, which is 52. Big num's going to be here. And this is raised to the third. So let's see. Let's see what number we get for the top and what number we get for the bottom. 93 squared. 93 squared is 8,600. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> 8,649. 
And then let's see, we get 52 squared times 48. Very, very, very big num. 129,792. All right, let's do the division. QP equals this number divided by this number. And looks like I have two sig figs. So I'll just say 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 1, 2, negative 2. Okay. So we got the Q value. The next thing we just have to do is remember, we always compare the Q value with the K value. Now there's a little trick here, guys, okay? So if you want to do the trick, you always put the Q value on the right-hand side of your K value. List out the numbers. So the Q value we just said was 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative second. And the KP value was 4.50 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, if you need to, you could take these out of scientific notation. All right, so for example, if I took these out of scientific notation just to see these easier, this would basically be the same thing as four zeros and then a four, five, zero. This would just be 0 0.066. Out of these two numbers, which number is, um, or what can we say? The KP is less than, greater than, or equal to the QP. Well, since this number is way lower, way lower than this one, the KP has to be less than the QP. So I'm going to put a less than sign here. So here's the trick. Take this and treat it as an arrowhead. Bring it back. Look at that. We got, we got a direction. You see that? If I just bring this back, oh, look at that, right? So we're going this way. Actually, let me go, let me do this way. Right? And it kind of makes sense. If your KP is way, 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 way low, remember any K that's less than one or, you know, as lower than one as possible, you want to favor your reactants. Since this number is bigger, that means you have more products than necessary. So you need to shift to the left. And that's all said over here. If you guys want to memorize what's going on. So in this case, we are shifting to the left. And that's it. It said, which direction will you shift to reach equilibrium? We're going to shift to the left, going from the products to the reactants. And there you go. Hopefully this helped, guys. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope I'm giving you great educational content. And we also have physics and math videos on the channel, so go check them out. All right? Thank you so much, and I will see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.